This was an evasion, invasion, basically. Anybody who comes in uninvited comes into a place uh, with their own preconceived notion of the local culture, uh, with their own ideas of who they are uh, and who the other people are, are always colonialists. A form of cultural imperialism? Yes, of course it was. I mean, you know, you're imposing your idea of God. I mean, it, you cannot be more culturally specific than the notion of an individual's personal spirituality. There's no question we were involved in, not merely in a civilizing process, but in an imperial project. That was cloaked and defended, particularly by the Kipling-esque rhetoric that they were bringing freedom to uh, a benighted people, the lesser breeds without the law. Part of the motivation was to civilize the people. Most Africans would feel very grateful for the education that was brought and for the modernization that was brought and improvements in healthcare. But the problem with the, this particular process of civilization was that it was, it was done in a very um, European way, a very ethnocentric way, which took no account of the history and the culture of these people, particularly maybe the education system. They were forced to speak English um, in much the same way as Irish children had been forced to speak English in previous generations. There were, like I said, vicious institutions, uh, which were very, uh, in many cases extreme in terms of brutalizing people or flogging them and I was flogged for speaking Igbo in Irish schools. Well if on the one hand um, a Holy Ghost teacher is telling uh, an Igbo boy that some way his language is background and beating him for speaking it, he's damaging his culture. If on the other hand he's giving him a very broad education and a window in the world that he otherwise wouldn't have hap had. He's doing a lot of good. And unfortunately, human progress is crabwise. It's never in a straight line.